So, we've got a ink pen with a brush. So, I'll draw it. Nice brush here. Nice. I'll show you some swatches as well. And um, we've got this fine ink pen. It's a cheap, fine ink pen. Um, this black winged pencil, an eraser, ruler, no, because you always need to pencil this hat. Um, and we've got a Windsor and Newton particle marker. This is to colour in big like, black spots in your comic. Um, so I start off on the page when I'm drawing a character. Um, with their torso because that is the middle of the body it's the most thing that everything connects off so I start off with that now the direction of the chest is very important so if say I want to draw a character like Spider-Man and he's jumping then if he's jumping and he's swinging he's going to be fun so I draw a little direction on the chest that is usually draw on the face now, if I'm drawing Spider-Man, I'll do something that Todd McFarlane does when drawing Spider-Man, which is I'll do the head, um, do the head and then swing him back. I think I'll give him a bit of a big chest for Spider-Man. Let me just start Spider-Man's quite skinny, I think. So let me just thin out the chest a bit, right? And then I'll draw the um, hip area and I'll connect him with the line. The distance between the hip and the finger is So, what if he's got his finger up but he's looking down, say he just turned past the villain and he's just missed him? I don't know why. But he has. Now, I really like the one of Spider Man by McFarlane, so that's what I'm inspired by when drawing him, which I'm drawing now. I don't draw Spider Man that much, um, but McFarlane gives him, gives him really big eyes. Almost. I don't draw them personally as big, I still draw them very big. And they have a little thing at the top. I haven't done Spider-Man in a very long time, so it's quite coming. Um, he has, you don't really have a nose that much when he's in the mask because it covers it up. Um, and he has a little bit of a jaw in there. And we'll draw the front bit of his neck coming in and the back bit going out. And that can move him close to the spot. Um, just tossing that bit up. And um, now, when I'm doing the webbing, I'm just going to go out with it. These lines. And then when you get to the torso, start going out with the webbing. Um, that's going to get in more wide. I've just done that bit of the webbing with it the webbing, the crisscross bit, and then you can't start going with the other bits. Um, I'm not doing the proper webbing today, just the, um, just doing an easier version, because in, um, without drawing intricate webbing on the other. Um, so, yeah. Um, I think I've done that bit of the job, but it's all looking decent. So, I was going to twist his body. Now, I do make quite a lot of revisions and stuff. So, say I've drawn his, his, um, his hips to the row there. So, I just erase that. And I just redraw it. And I'll still connect it up. There we go. And so, if he's swinging, you know, he's swinging. But I like drawing circles. And so, connecting circles when drawing the body. Some classic um, hand. So I do the hand and the thumb. I go around because he's obviously holding on to the webbing. So I draw the normal webbing inside, just straight lines, and then.
water a bit more. So when I'm inking, I like to, sorry, 
play this cable in the way. My phone was just a low battery and I need to record the footage of the actual Um so I started inking yeah. and with my brush pen to sort off earlier. Um and I always got around with a thick outline and then go thin with the inner details. Um, tell me who you want me to draw next as well, just because you know, I can draw lots, I have lots of time. Um, I think I draw, I draw um, comic characters mostly, um, but I can draw manga, I can draw cartoons, TV shows, music artists. Um, so yeah, um, also I'm thinking of releasing a how to make a comic book video, so tell me if that's something you might want. Um, so I go in for the webs, I go in with my thin, thin layer. Um, and I go a bit scratchy if things go Now, this top bit is working, so I can only use the bottom bit, but I use this for the big black bits of the muscles. And then it's for the very thin bits um, I use my ruler for drawing panels, but I don't use it that much for ink it. So, but I mean, for when I'm not doing book panel so I'm not really using it for this. This would probably be like a fun cover if it was to be a Spider-Man comic. Um, Spider-Man comics are pretty good. Recently they've been pretty good as well. Um, yeah, I've read lots of Spider-Man comics, Spider-Man ones. Um, Spider-Man number one is the most old comic ever. Um, Sp Spider-Man number one, not the amazing Spider-Man. The original one, the one by Tom McFarlane, which was the sort of style doing here so sort of fits um but i do draw the spider spider-man in my own kind of way um very similar to some farming but i'm making less muscular because i think spider-man isn't muscular he's a beautiful insect but he's got to have skinny and lanky so i draw like the eyes and the poses like top of farming but with the body shape of steve ditko um and I think it works together to give, when I draw characters like Spider-Man, a very unique, because I think it's boring that every single character has the exact same body. They all have the same, like, muscular, lean physique. So I just think it's interesting if you give characters physiques that more fit their abilities. You know, if someone's own, they have to be strong with abs, they can be strong, I guess, sumo wrestling, you know what I mean? And um, that's just something I really like doing in the comics. I think it makes them more interesting. Also, the silhouettes um, look more interesting as well, which is very important because I black out and silhouette my characters lots when they're in a long shot. Um, or like they're sneaking up behind someone and stuff like that. It's fun to back out for mystery or because you can't really draw any tiny details. It's a helpful tool. So, um, <clears throat> it's good to have that for things like that. Um, so, yeah, um, I was thinking of doing Batman maybe, um, because I haven't drawn him that many times, um, Daredevil, Punisher, and uh, um, Deadpool and Wolverine have just released, I've already drawn Deadpool, I haven't drawn him on one of his tutorial videos, but I have drawn him in a short, so, maybe Deadpool, maybe, to make that one. Maybe that book could be interesting to
to them and just go on my body. I like being a bit scratchy with my ink work. Um, so yeah. Right. Around with the body. Um, so I'll be very fine with the main details. I like to add in the black shadow for where there's the most contrast in the design. Um, and giving them a black outline. It's interesting. And if something's in the background, like I'm drawing this for here, um, I'll just fill it in. You can see me do here. So I'm sure that it's in the background. Um, I do do backgrounds quite a lot in my art, but I don't, I'm not doing it for this because it will take too much time and also it's more about drawing the characters here. So when you're drawing a comic, you don't draw the background of every panel I find. You draw the character in full detail and the background in full detail on the first and second panel. They know what they're in and the rest of them can just draw action lines and stuff. Or just draw or a silhouette the end of the because they already know what it looks like in the first two panels so you can just set it in the hand and that's a tip if you just a bit if you're not really good at backgrounds you just want to do them once and then leave them and then here's that tip I did give him some here because he is a bit of a gymnast as well though so he's swinging stuff he needs abs but he's not, he's not like super broad shoulders and stuff he doesn't need broad shoulders probably would make it harder for him to watch them. Then usually in an actual comic book company, you'd hand this off to a colour artist once you've done inking. But since I make my own comics and I don't have a colour artist, it's literally just me. I do the colour myself, so I wouldn't do colouring this guy digitally um, in a minute. So we just finish doing this. So most people, pretty much everyone, colour digitally. You know, I don't have a fancy. Like, oh, I do have a fancy like thing going to it, but I don't use it. I'm thinking of selling it because I use the iPad the most for digital art. So I scan this, I'm going to scan this in in a minute once I'm done with the inking. And then I'm going to take the inking and scan it in. Out of four. Four digital is just a lot of inking. So it just. I like to stand up for. Goes over all my other ink lines, so 